Little Women, I think, was the first story that portrayed women as as human, as as um, real beings that made mistakes, and also real artistic characters that were in that time, which was not, you know, that's not how women were viewed back then. And I remember when my gran read it to me, how important it was for her to read it as a child and for her to read it to my mom and then for my mom, you know, to study it. It's, Im it's important because it still holds that, that slither of what it was to be a woman back then and how we are still facing, you know, things like that of now, um, no matter how old you are or when you've read it. The most important thing for me about this version that I fell in love with straight away was that everybody's perception of Amy is that, is that she's the, um, she's the sour one, I suppose, in the family that is spoilt and she has everything and she gets what she wants. And I think what I loved about this is that um, you really get to see her brilliance um, and, and, and her sensitive side and how, um, how complicated and, and human she is. And actually, are we more a little bit like Amy rather than everyone wanting to be like Joe, which is what I thought was quite beautiful about it, really. The sisterly bond is everything. That's the whole book. That's the whole storyline. It's um, it highlights what it is to be a sister in that time or this time. Um, they love each other. They hate each other. They talk over the top of one another. They kiss each other. They cry for each other. Um, and it's something that obviously people revisit, you know, decades apart. Whether it's your gran that read it to you, or your mum, or your sister, it's relevant to to any age because it's consistent and it's it's real Greta didn't want the girls to be um, in the format that they usually are she didn't want it to be a classical way of talking and she didn't want us to be um, you know enjoying our space too much she wanted it to be like sisters so if you're with a group of girls and you haven't seen them in a while, you're all talking over the top of one another and there is no time for you to wait and there is no time for you to listen to what they actually said until you've realised whilst you're doing something else four minutes later that they said that. And I think that was what was really wicked about Greta. She, from the get-go, she was like, these are girls. It doesn't matter where they are or when they were born. These are tight girls that are incredibly intelligent and so... Um, creative and they're not going to be standing in their position to finish their line and then wait for their sister to talk that's not how sisters work and so from the get-go like most of um most of our focus has been on the language and how we can make that as relevant and as normal as possible and 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 making it constantly flow it's a constant song and you're never waiting for a line you're talking over the top and that's what's made doing the scene so thrilling and i think that's the one main kind of major alteration that I've loved about Greta's kind of modern look on it. It's always very scary coming onto projects like this with that, that caliber of cast or just the, the novel or, or the storyline. And she just from the get go wanted to just messy it up and, and, and make it comfortable for us. Um, and make sure that, you know, we weren't always in our costumes, that we're half dressed or that we're, you know, getting out of bed or, you know, she really wanted to make this as authentic and as real as possible. And that's so fun to have a director that just wants to not have it perfect. And from that, it's created such, you know, beautiful shots and such wonderful uh, crescendo of scenes that that's only, that's completely down to her. Um, and she's, she's very generous with everything, with her time, with her vision, with her ability to listen and change and help you. Um, and that only creates a free space.